I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, um, uh, oh, oh, uh, um, oh, uh, oh, um, oh, how did that go? There is a plot device used in some mystery fiction known as the unreliable narrator. In these cases, it transpires the person telling the tale may themselves be more involved than you were led to believe, and they may not have been telling you the whole story. Here at Highly Suspect HQ, we've taken this tried and tested concept of the unreliable narrator and made a stupid game out of it. Our murderer-in-chief will record himself telling a short murder mystery tale, which, like all of our mysteries, is 100% solvable with the information provided. This will be sent to one of our elite team of regular suspects, who is only allowed to watch it once. They will then record themselves trying to recount the same story to the best of their memory, before sending their version to another highly suspect individual, who will do the same. This chain will continue until everyone in the team has retold the tale, at which point we'll watch it back together and see if anyone has been able to solve the mystery told by a string of unreliable narrators. And even if they haven't, the result should be, well, highly suspect. Hello, faithful viewer. Um, esteemed actor Eden McGandalf here to tell you a tale that spawned my most iconic role. Rod Fisher, the fisherman detective from hit TV show Red Herrings. This is the case of the fishy fatality. On the third weekend of August every year, the Real Deal Fishing Emporium hosts a 24-hour fishathon on the vast mist-covered lake Herdegrin, with a cash prize of £20,000 for the biggest catch. Tragedy struck one fateful year when front-runner fisherman Juan that got away was found dead in his rowboat, floating in the mists about a mile offshore. He'd been gutted with his own fishing knife, all of his organs casually discarded around the boat, except for his stomach, which must have been thrown overboard and was never recovered. Ugh. Police were baffled as to how the killer had been able to locate their victim on the vast lake. All positions were randomly determined and kept anonymous, and the mists reduced visibility to almost zero. Cat Chov the Day was Juan's ex-wife. Juan had secured the majority of the estate in the divorce, citing infidelity on Cat's part, observing she had rather too much interest in other men's fishing poles. She strenuously denied this and said Juan would be the one to be sleeping with the fishes. Hugh Klein and Sinker was Juan's chief rival in the competition. The evening before the event, Juan had interrupted Hugh's romantic candlelit meal with his partner, snorkeling instructor Bree Thunderwater. Juan barged in, slapped his competitor with a herring, and took a big bite out of the beautifully prepared swordfish Hugh had caught in the practice session the day earlier. He gulped it down, nearly choking in the process, and told Hugh if this was the best he could catch, he could do better. Hugh had intended to propose to Bree that night, and he swore revenge on Juan for ruining his big gesture. However, Bree was seen wearing a beautiful ocean blue sapphire engagement ring when she welcomed Hugh back to the shore the next day. The pathology report revealed Juan had been killed by a blow to the back of the head with the paddle of his own boat, and was gutted immediately after he expired. And that's the case. Very fishy, I'm sure you'll all agree, but don't flounder. See if you can solve this one, just for the halibut. <laughs> Hello everybody, it's Rod Fisher here, famous fisherman detective from my series. Oh, actually no, I'm Ian McGandalf who plays Rod Fisher, damn, in my famous detective series, Red Herrings. And I'm here to tell you about the true life case that actually launched the entire show, what not. This is the case of the fishy fatality. On the 3rd August, third weekend in August every year, the Real Fishing uh, Factory holds a competition to find the best fishermen. There is a large cash prize as they all go out onto the Lake Herdengreen to fish for the biggest catch. Unfortunately, this particular competition, the uh, competitor, uh, Juan, Oh, his last name. He's the victim. Juan 
real left, I'll think of it. Anyway, Juan um, was found dead in his boat in the middle of the lake, gutted. Every, um, all of him was splayed all over the boat, apart from organs dashed everywhere, apart from his stomach, which had been tossed overboard, presumably never to be found. Uh, police were baffled. How had somebody managed to locate his boat, given that they were all anonymously assigned? And the mist was particularly foggy that day, so no one knows, no one would have been able to see. The main suspects were Cap of the day, his ex-wife. They had a bitter, acrimonious divorce, and Cat was uh, found she was the one who instigated the divorce, you see, because she was said to have been interested in other men's fishing bowls. So, there was Kat. Um, then, his main rival, Juan's main rival, Hugh, punny name, fishing, oh crud, huge catch of the day, no, damn it. Anyway, Hugh, he was the other, he was his main rival. They were both tete tete fishermen, and apparently the night before, Juan had ruined his romantic evening with his lover, Hugh's lover, Bree, the scuba, in dive, scuba instructor, breathing underwater. They were having a romantic meal when Juan burst in and slapped them, Juan around, slapped Hugh around the face with a halibut and said, you are not going to win the competition tomorrow, waha! And then he picked up the beautiful swordfish they were eating and chomped on it, and then stormed out of there, and they were all very upset. But apparently the rumour is that Hugh was going to propose to Brie on this particular evening. Um, but all's well, but see, it ends well. It seems that uh, Juan's interruption did not uh, cause too much of offence, because Brie was seen wearing a beautiful sapphire engagement ring, when she welcomed Hugh back in from the competition on the shores of Lake Herd Green the next day. What are their fishy names? Juan? Juan more fish to catch, let's say. Juan more fish to catch and huge cat, huge fish on the line. There we go. But that's it, folks. We don't know who got to Juan and who gutted him in his boat, how or why. I hope you can solve this and it's not a cod case and that you can solve it just for the halibut. <sighs> oh, good lord, good luck. <clears throat> oh my good lord. I thought this was going to be easier. I thought you said this was easier. Um, hello everybody, it's me, Ian McGandalf. I'm talking about my show, Red Herrings, where I play the great detective Rod Fisher, and I thought I'd just share how, you know, the show came about, the first ever case. It was called The Fishy Fatality. On the third weekend in August every year, there is the real fishing tournament, the Big Fish Factory, and they do a tournament every week, not every week, <laughs> No, they do, a, they do a tournament on the third weekend of August every year. And this particular one, where they do the tournament on Lake Herd Green, um, something went really badly wrong. And as everyone got assigned their boats and they went out into the water on this particularly misty, foggy day, they found one... <sighs> the person before me didn't really remember the name, and I can't remember what they substituted it as, but it's Juan. Juan. Big catch. I don't know. Juan fish. Juan. And that's the important part. It's Juan. Or is it Juan? It might be Juan. It's probably Juan. Oh, God. It's Juan. Um, and he was found dead. He'd been gutted on his boat in the middle of the lake. All of his organs and everything were all over the boat, apart from his stomach which was, you know, maybe thrown overboard, but wherever it was, it was nowhere to be found. And the police are baffled because, you know, everyone's assigned their boat. It's all anonymous, so how could someone know it was his boat? And it was a particularly foggy day, so how could they even find him? It was all very confusing and stressful. Um, but we have some suspects. We have his ex-wife, Kath, 
Catch of the day, I think. Catch of the day. Um, who, you know, ex-wife could have done it. I don't. I don't know. I, a lot. Not a lot was said about her. It's probably not her. I shouldn't be sharing my opinion on the case, but I am. Um, there we go. Um, <laughs> so moving on. Um, there was his rival, however, his rival, which was also the second name slightly forgotten, but I think it was huge. Huge catch, huge catch. Um, he was a big rival, always been a rival every single year. Um, and apparently, there was a little bit of, um, of, of, of a scene, an event the night before, where Juan um, interrupted Hugh um, on a very special night. You see, huge catch was um, seeing somebody, a woman named uh, uh, a scuba diving instructor named. Breathe underwater. Breathe underwater. I don't know why I'm repeating them, but I think it might help. Well, no, it's helping me. <laughs> That's why I'm repeating. Um, and they were at this lovely restaurant, which was uh, apparently, rumor has it, where Hugh was going to um, propose to Bree. Um, so it was quite big. But then Juan came in, slapped Hugh over the face with a hal halibut, halibut, and said, you're not going to win this competition, you fool. And then grabbed the swordfish at the center of the table, took a big bite out of it, stormed out. Um, so quite a big scene, bigger, big thing, possibly ruined an engagement. But luckily enough, he didn't ruin anything because Bree was seen, you know, welcoming Hugh off the lake after the competition with a lovely ring round her finger. So everything, everything obviously went really well. Um, and I, I think, I think that's it. I think, oh, I'm really scared I missed a character. Oh, oh, I, I, I'm gonna have to end it because I can't think. <laughs> but you know, I think, you know, I've got Juan, Juan Fish, or Juan, I don't, I, I don't know, <laughs> he's dead. Um, Kath, of the day, then huge catch. They're very similar. Like, it's probably not that if they're that similar. And uh, breathe the underwater. They're your kind of your suspects, as it would. Um, well, there you go. Apparently, from that, they were able to solve it. Um, and I, again, Elf, hope it's not a cod case. But, you know, go ahead of it. Just, oh, God. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. What the heck am I doing? Um, my last joke is something stupid as well. It's like halibut something. You know, solve it for the halibut. Yeah. Yeah, we'll go with that. That kind of works. God's sake. Hello, I'm Ian McGendelf, star of the TV show Red Herrings, where I play famous detective Rod Fisher. And I'm going to take you through how the very first case happened, came to be where it came from. It was called the Fishy Fatality. Now I'm going to take you to a small fishing town and on the third weekend of every August they had a fishing competition. So the third week of August rolls around and this particular day is very very foggy, but out they went on their boats anyway to start this fishing competition, which probably violated some sort of health and safety, but never mind, out they went. And out on the lake, didn't specify it was a lake, I presume it was a lake, in the fog they found the body of a man named Juan. We didn't know Juan's surname, presume he had one and that it was punny, but we didn't know it anyway. Ha, Han, Juan was dead. He had been gutted. His guts were all over his boat and his stomach was missing. It wasn't there. We presume it went overboard, but we don't know. It's not there. This caused con some confusion because it was a very foggy day and all of the boats went out anonymously, so there was no way really for anybody murderous to have known that that was Juan's boat, and yet somehow they found him and he was dead. 
We have a few suspects in this case. I'm going to run through them quickly because I'm going to forget. The first was Juan's ex-wife, Catch of the Day. And we didn't say anything at all about Catch of the Day. So we presume she wasn't very suspicious, which probably means that she did it. I don't know. Next up, there was Huge Catch, who was Juan's rival. And the night before the competition, they had some sort of spat, wherein Hugh was in a restaurant with a young lady named Bree Thunderwater, who was a scuba instructor, and it seemed that Hugh was going to propose that night to Bree until, what was his name, Juan? burst in and went up to their table and pointed at Hugh and said, you are never going to win this competition. He also slapped Hugh about the face with a halibut and then reached onto his table, picked up the swordfish that was there and took a huge bite out of it. And then he left. However, it seemed that the proposal was not entirely ruined because after the competition, Bree was seen welcoming Hugh back to dry land with a very large, very shiny engagement ring upon her finger. And I believe that was all of the information that we had. I've powered through it this time to try and stop it leaving, but I don't know. Ah, uh, bye. Oh God, so many suspect fish facts and possible puns. <clears throat> okay, Ian McGandolf here, a uh, famous actor who, who of course very famously played uh, uh, the, the fishing detective Rod Fisher um, in, in yesteryear days of television. Um, and I, I wanted to tell you about the, uh, the first case that I ever came across uh, as uh, which which made my name as the fisherman detective uh, bollocks how did that go uh, yes it was it was the case of the 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 fishy clue nope the case of the fishy clue um, what happened it went down like this um, there was uh, this fishing club and uh, every every third third weekend in August no the third week of ev yes the third week of every August once a year no anyway there was a fishing competition third week of the August of, of August and um, as usual all of the uh, many boats went out onto the uh, lake or possible sea body of water of some sort anyway um, and this particular uh, a time when they went out it was very very foggy dangerously foggy one might have said um, no regard for health and safety these um, fishing competitors um, anywho uh, what happened was the uh, fishermen and, uh, and the fishing boats all went out uh, and then mysteriously uh, one of them came across uh, a boat uh, which had one of the competitors in it known as Juan uh, who had a funny name, so I shall call him Juan of the biggest fish I've ever seen. Juan to his friends. And he was found in his boat and he had been eviscerated. His stomach had been pulled out and there, were, there was blood and gore everywhere. And this was very mysterious and suspicious because he had been alive when he went out. So uh, the, the, um, the suspicion fell on three very shady characters. There was, and I'm going to quickly go through the names so I don't forget them. Uh, there was Catch of the Day. There was Huge Catch. And there was Breathing Underwater. Yes, uh, because they they had history, they did. They, they knew each other intimately. Because, you see, the day before, or some time before, anyway, um, uh, Bree, Thing Underwater, and 
Hugh were going to be married. That was it. They were going to be married. And Hugh and Juan had a, 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 a rivalry that, that, that uh, would, would tear them apart and they, they hated each other. Um, and, and because of this, when the previous night, uh, Bry had, had um, met... Fuck, what is his name? Um, Hugh, huge catch, uh, had met huge catch at a restaurant and uh, Hugh was going to ask Bry to marry him but before he could, before he could, Juan entered the restaurant and, and, and disrupted proceedings by, uh, by insulting, insulting both of them somehow, I'm not sure how, uh, and then also taking a bite, a bite out of the swordfish that um, Hugh and Bri Bri were, were having, um, and then proceeded to storm off. Um, this was unexpected, uh, but um, everything seemed to be fine, and when Hugh returned to shore on the day of the competition, victorious because he had caught fish, uh, Brie had, had, uh, had, had an engagement ring to welcome him back with. Um, catch of the day appeared to be pointless, or possibly a red herring. My theory is that the mercury buildup in the swordfish had something to do with his evisceration. Okay, Ian McGandalf here. One of the most famous actors in the world. In fact, I want to tell you a tale that I once knew whence I was playing Rod Fisher, the great fisherman detective. Yes, uh, it is the tale of the fish, fishy water syndrome. Yes. So, uh, uh, what happened was there was this great fishing contest and one day uh, just before this fishing contest, it was very muggy and murky, and there were four people uh, going out into the fishing contest, yachting or fishing, I can't quite remember. Um, the, there was a uh, breathing underwater, a uh, huge catch, uh, um, uh, oh, oh, uh, um, oh, uh, Oh, oh, the chap that died, I forgot his name already. Uh, that was... Uh, not Sven. Uh, uh, no. Goodness me. The chap that died, and he... <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> this happened on stage, you know, I'd always forget my lines. Yes, it happened on stage, and I just was right with it. So, this chap... One of their friends, uh, he was called uh, Juan. Juan, uh, catch of the day, that was another one. So, breathing underwater, uh, huge catch, uh, catch of the day, and one big fish, that is the chap. And he was mysteriously killed, yes. Um, he was found in the water, uh, in his boat, dead. Um, now, what happened that preceded this uh, was... Uh, 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 b sorry, before this was a dinner party. Uh, a, a dinner. They went out for dinner, and this was um, Bree and Hugh Fish. Uh, he, they were due to get married, um, and uh, uh, Catch of the Day and Hugh. I think I could be wrong here. Went out for a meal, and oh, excuse me, my scarf is uh, is. is dripping down, yeah, dripping out of the water. <laughs> uh, yes, he um, he basically um, uh, was eating this uh, delicious uh, swordfish and he took a big bite out of that uh, and uh, thought nothing of it. In fact, uh, the next day before the race, uh, Bree uh, and uh, one big fish turned up with an engagement ring. Yes, uh, I'm not sure who it was that had an engagement ring, but there was an engagement ring. I think as well there was uh, a bit of a kerfuffle between huge catch and breathing underwater. Mm, catch of the day might have been a woman, I'm not sure. Again, always forgetting lines. Uh, catch of the day, um, 
yes, let's say that she was she was a, a, a lady. Uh, breathing underwater was sought after, I think, by some of the other fishermen. Uh, uh, but uh, on looking at the mercury that uh, uh, one big fish had eaten uh, from the um, from the swordfish, I think possibly that could have been the reason for it uh, for him his demise you know uh, i'm now just just going back through it so there was uh, there was a fishing contest uh, that i uh, i remember from my days of rod fisher uh, or the, the great fisherman detective uh, and there was murky waters uh, and it was very very hazy on the day um, and three uh, four boats went out that would be one big fish who passed away sadly um breathing underwater or brying on breathing underwater i think a uh, huge uh, fish uh, catch of the day and uh, they all went out and it was only uh, breathing underwater catch of the day and huge big fish that came back in uh, and then they found the the remains the dead corpse of uh, of um one big fish uh, um, previously the night before they went out for a meal i think it was one and brie uh, and and uh, there was an engagement i'm not sure if it was between him and her or her and someone else um and then there was definitely a rivalry between Hugh yes i remember that now there's a rivalry between Hugh and uh one big fish i think he obviously quite liked Bree yes um anyway going forward the the man terribly terribly passed away and then after that there was uh, an inquest uh, and, and and obviously from that we we deciphered who who killed him but um uh, that's up to you to uh, to to tell us who killed him. <laughs> well, that's Ian Maganda signing off. <laughs>And welcome uh, to episode two of the unreliable narrator, uh, narrate harder. That's <laughs> really? second time around. Uh, murderers, how did you find the second one? Harder, easier, more horrendous, less horrendous? Easier. So much easier. So much easier. I think it was yeah. easier. I used a different tactic this time. So I'm going to employ going forward. Interesting. Really, Which was? Really to not slow down to a slow and painful stop <laughs> just power through it's a good tactic I, oh I, so, so that's a tactic for saying it not for remembering it so you may have remembered tactic, it you know just not at all the tactic for remembering it was after i watched the one before me i took a minute before i recorded mine just to make sure i had oh. facts in my head oh so you had Risky. time for a bit of reflection first oh. well that didn't help me i panicked because I saw mine and they had a hat and a scarf on and I forgot about that. And then I watched it because I didn't want to pause it. And I watched it all and then I rushed around to found it. By the time I sat down again, I'd kind of forgot what the video was about. Um, um, it helped, think, didn't help fair, me. Fair to say, I, I made I was kinder this time. I made the mystery mm -hmm. a little bit easier, mm. um, a little bit to a lot easier. Um, so it'll be interesting to see whether it actually survived this time. Um, whether it will be solvable by the end of it or whether it's turned to absolute nonsense. The only um, little teaser I'll give before we start watching these is that the, uh, the time of each video fluctuates wildly. Um, mine was exactly the same length as last time, as a, a lovely two and a half minutes. Um, I think the shortest is three and a bit, um, and the longest is very nearly six minutes. <laughs> Ooh. Um, <laughs> but I didn't get much detail, so that's a long <laughs> six minutes. Um, so first, <laughs> before he looks really suspect. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think mine's close to that as well. Mine's so right, before we launch into it, um, don't reveal yet who you think did it, if you think we've solved it. Uh, but let's just go around everyone and see if, if you think you have solved it, if you've got a, a reasonable idea based on logical um, assumptions or whether you're pretty much clueless. Um, so, uh, who went first? Lex, do you think you've been able to solve it? Yeah. I mean, I heard it straight from the horse's mouth this time. So, yes, I think I know who solved um, it. From you, it went to uh, Joe? Yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy. I feel like... The thing is, I say I'm very happy, but then I also very much feel like I decided when watching it the first time who I thought it was. So I might have kind of led it 
uh, so you're really like heavily towards bias. one theory. So you incriminated somebody with your with your retail. Yeah, I think I might because I definitely put I'm one character book. completely like out of the equation. I even, I think I even said in the video it's not them or okay. something like okay. that. I, okay. I completely just disregarded one character. Um, so I hope it's not them. But I feel quite confident with my theory. Yeah. Good. Excellent. So following that, Alice, confident. Yeah, I think I overthought the killer, but I'm pretty happy with, with my theory. Okay, nice. Um, and then it went to Seb. Oh, Not a gosh darn clue. <laughs> Interesting. So somewhere here, it's maybe got a little bit no. murky. I mean, uh, I, I, there, there were certainly vague plot points that could have been relevant. Um, but given my, my final answer, nah. <laughs> no idea. Okay, interesting. Um, and uh, finally, Polly, it ended uh, with yourself. Um, <laughs> Good choice. Well done, friend. <laughs> I can't ruin. I can't ruin it for anyone other than myself. No. <laughs> uh, I I uh, I honestly cannot really remember what I said. <laughs> okay. Well, with that in mind, uh, shall we watch um, how this story all started? Oh, yeah. Yeah. There he is. Bless him. <laughs> Run a fisherman, Juan that got away was found uh, dead. Uh, uh, ah, <laughs> <that's not right. laughs> uh, there's the first ripple with his own fishing knife. Fuel climb and Cinco was Juan's chief rival. Oh, oh that's oh, funny. Oh, yes. That's his name. Did Hugh's romantic candle? If this was the best he could catch, he could do better. Oh, oh, no. Yeah, that fish pun doesn't last long. Yeah. Spoilers. Yes, oh. very fishy, I'm sure you'll all agree, but don't flounder. See if you can solve this one just for the hell of it. <laughs> it's got such okay, a creepy okay. part, hasn't it? <laughs> the best part is, is I'm fully aware that there's, there's like a clear two jokes at the end, like two puns. But I'm sure I got one pun, and the other one I got a completely different one. <laughs> Are you implying that the person who gave your story made up some big puns? Yeah, it's that tiny bit, yeah. But I, I, yeah, I was still better. I, I made up a punny last name for Juan because I only had Juan to work with. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yes, it was it was a little more unwieldy, but uh, I'm glad that he got a second name again. What's interesting already, watching back and watching everyone's reactions here, is that. There wasn't as much surprise at the story, which makes mm. me feel yep. that the actual the, the story is probably maintained pretty well to the end. But once again, um, everyone was reacting to the names as though this was the first time you'd heard them. <laughs> yeah. Um, Try to remember the names. Is it shouldn't be as yeah. hard as it is. It's the hardest bit. Name. I think it's the hardest I'm bit. I'm excited so, to see everyone's voice, Ian's voice. Yeah, it? this is also the first time, because obviously <laughs> I'm, I'm just general uh, Detective Inspector Noah Deer, who sounds more or less like me, and everyone didn't really do a character they just um spoke apart from one or two of you who remembered halfway through that you were the inspector um, whereas this time of course this was coming from the dulcet tones of ian mcgandalf so i look forward to seeing ian retell this story yes. um via yourselves and if we all wore <laughs> <Look at Alice. laughs> Hello, Ian Fisher here, famous fisherman detective from my series. Oh, actually, no, I'm Ian McGandalf. Already going well. So good. That actually launched the entire show. Very handy. This is the case of the fishy fatality. On the third August, third weekend in August every year, the real fishing uh, factory was a competition to find the best fishermen. There is a large cash prize as they all go out onto the lake herding green to fish. Not an anagram of red herring anymore then. No, but unfortunately this particular competition, the uh, competitor... Uh, there was panic. <laughs> last name. <laughs> One... Real left, I'll think of it. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna guess she doesn't. I think I made one up. Gotcha. Yeah, you did. Every but I forgot that. All, of <laughs> all over the boat, apart from organs dashed everywhere, apart from his stomach, which had been tossed overboard, presumably never to be found. 
and the police were baffled. How had somebody managed to locate his boat, given that they were all anonymously assigned? And the yeah. list was particularly foggy that day. <laughs> okay. So no one knows, no one would have been able to see. The main <laughs> <laughs> was that in the original, Mike? Of the uh, well, it was a foggy, it was the fog-covered lake. Yeah, yeah it was a misty lake. Acrimonious divorce. And Kat was uh, found, she was the one who instigated the divorce, you see, because she was said to have been interested in other men. Oh, poor Kat, I ruined her. <laughs> I ruined her. <laughs> what did you do? Then his main rival, Juan's main rival, Hugh, <laughs> punny name, fishing. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> yes. Of the day. No, no, anyway, Hugh, he Oh was, yeah, catch him again. He was his main rival. They were both Ted Ted fishermen. And <laughs> I don't know what Ted Ted fishermen is. He ruined his romantic evening with his lover, Hugh's lover, Bree, the scuba, in die, scuba instructor, <laughs> Bree, being underwater. They were having a romantic meal when Juan burst in and slapped them, Juan around, slapped Hugh around the face with a halibut and Did said, that happen? You are it was a herring, wind. but yes. Oh, come on. And then he picked up the beautiful swordfish they were eating and chopped on it, and then stormed out of there. And they were all very upset. But <laughs> apparently, the woman. <laughs> <made> the <laughs> it's like you're telling a bedtime story <laughs> to a three year old. <laughs> and they were all very upset. Five year olds. <laughs> well, but uh, Juan's interruption did not uh, cause too much of offense because Brie was seen wearing but a voice has dropped from yeah, I feel it. from when she welcomed from you from the hello it's, it's gotten a bit less yeah a little bit less what are their fishing names one more, <laughs> one more fish to catch let's say <laughs> <laughs> huge fish on the line <laughs> huge fish on the line <laughs> to Juan and who got him in his boat, how or why? I hope you can solve this and it's not a cod case and that you can solve it just for the halibut. Cod case wasn't in yours, was it? No. No, that's what I meant. What time is cod case? I think it's brilliant. Oh my god, I didn't realise I did that. I'm supposed to be cold case. <laughs> as soon as I say, because I do, I do remember cod case, and I remember saying it, and then visibly just like breaking down, with like a, I don't know what I'm doing. Like it's a real distressing feeling to try, like say cod case. It's always stressful when you got to follow what Lexi's telling you. Oh God, that's true. Oh. Oh. Um, so, I, however, um, I think what? all of the plot was there. I mean, some of it had altered ever so slightly. A, but a hit with a halibut instead of a herring. All of the beats of the plot were there. Um, all we really lost were some of the characters' surnames. Yep, and I made up some excellent alternatives. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> 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 yeah. Huge fish on my line. Okay, let's, let's go with that. Um, so, uh, we've already sort of discussed this, but do you think it's still solvable? Oh, yeah, hell yeah. Perfect. Um, in which case, we will waste no time and move on to the next unreliable narrator, uh, which was Joe. Juan Joe, um, as these call him in fishing circles. Go no, Juan. Don't, don't talk go about Juan. Juan with me. <laughs> I had a bit of a breakdown with Juan. I had a lot of breakdowns during this, this one. Oh, I can't wait. Uh, let's... I really enjoyed it. it was, I, you, I think it was excellently done. Let's see whether it's excellently followed with our second unreliable narrator. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> Oh, oh my! You managed to catch the pretty well. Oh, Macho! I thought you said this was easier. Um, <laughs> hello, everybody. It's me. Talking about my show. Rod Fisher. How is it my just shit? How? You know, the show came about the first ever case. Oh my God! So fishy fatality. <laughs> On the third weekend in August every year, hey. there is the real fishing tournament. There's a big fish <laughs> fest. The tournament every it wasn't week. The was it? No, the I real think. fishing tournament. <coughs> on the third weekend of August every year. And this particular one 
where they do the tournament. Or <laughs> the, the fishing tournament <laughs> on the third <laughs> weekend of August. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> they had resolved. And as everyone got assigned their boats and they went out into the water on this particularly misty, foggy In the third weekend in August. One. The, the person before me didn't really remember the name. And I can't remember the name. Frank Frank he's given up. He's given up. I'm being in the goddamn now. He's playing yeah, with something know. else. I don't know. Fwan fish. Fwan <laughs> <laughs> fish. One fish. One fish. Fish, but it's probably one. Oh, one. Do you not know the name one? All of his organs and everything, <coughs> apart from his stomach, which was, you know, maybe thrown overboard. But wherever it was, it, <laughs> it could have been carried off by a passing falcon. Yeah. Wards assigned their boat. It's all anonymous, so how could someone know it was his boat? And it was a particularly foggy day, so how could they even find him? On the oh, third weekend in August. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> but we have some suspects. Oh, here she is. I ruined her. Catch of the day. Catch of the day. Catch of the day. Um, who, you know, ex-wife could have done it. I don't, I don't know. I, a lot, not a lot was said about her. <laughs> <laughs> Even less <laughs> about her afterwards. Ah, uh, there's Detective yeah. Joe <laughs> weighing in. So, moving on. <laughs> His bride, which was also the second name slightly forgotten, but I think it was Hugh, Hugh to catch. Hugh to catch. Um, he was a big rival, always been a rival every single year. Huge rival, um, some might say. Apparently, there was a little bit of um, <clears throat> a, a, a scene, an event the night before, where Juan um, interrupted Hugh um, on a very special night. You see, huge catch was um, <laughs> seeing somebody, a woman named uh, uh, a scuba diving instructor <laughs> named Breathe underwater. <laughs> Breathe underwater. And they were at this lovely restaurant, which was uh, apparently rumor has it where Hugh was going to um, propose to Bree. Um, <clears throat> I think. But then Juan came in, slapped Hugh over the face with a ha halbert, halbert, <laughs> halbert, and said, you're not going to win this competition, you fool. Did <laughs> 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 he? You fool! <laughs> um, so quite a big scene, big, uh, big thing. Possibly ruined an engagement, but luckily enough, he didn't ruin anything. Could have ruined it! The competition with a lovely ring around her finger. So everything, everything obviously went really well. Um, Apart from the dead bodies. <laughs> And I, I think, I think that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is a face of certainty. <laughs> oh, I'm really scared I missed a character. Oh, <laughs> oh I, I, I'm going to have to end it because I can't think. <laughs> but, you know, I think, you know, I've got Juan, Juan Fish, or Juan. I don't, I, I don't know. <laughs> 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 of the day, then huge catch. They're very similar, but it's probably not that. If the you're trying to be helpful in the water, the suspects, as it were. Um, well, there you go. Apparently, from that, they were able to solve it. Um, and I and the Gandalf hope it's not a cod case. <laughs> <laughs> that is the look of somebody who's questioning your choice right there. <laughs> What the heck am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> you just graduated from a degree in performing arts, man. How did it come to you? God's sake. No, you mean God's sake. Well, tremendous work. The, the several oh. things I really enjoy about that. First of all was that it started very strongly as Ian Gandalf and then turned into the old man at the pub who keeps talking to you despite the fact you want to be away from them. <laughs> um, and secondly, you finished and then decided to sum up 
and talked for almost as long again, summing it up <laughs> as when you described the case the first time. <laughs> I think it wasn't even summing it up, it was going over the names. Just yeah, the names, that's going, that's I've forgotten that's someone, that's have I forgotten that's someone? That's hmm. That's, that's why I did it, it's because I didn't want like a dot situation. And for some reason, I just got this worry. I was like, I'm gonna have to go through the names and hope that it might rejog a character I've missed or something. But I didn't miss a character, I just missed every single piece of information you possibly <laughs> needed to know about the ex-wife. <laughs> Other than basically dismissing one of the suspects, all of the information was there. Very bold. The information was there. Uh, but yeah, Joe, police, Detective Joe had decided that it definitely wasn't Kat, so <laughs> why bother sharing any information on her? Um, so, Joe, uh, still confident that you've solved it? And still think it's solvable as a result of... I think of so. Your I think so. I think, I think... It was full of crap, but like I think the <laughs> info is there. I think you know I got the mist, like the I said four of times. Um, <laughs> yeah, on the third weekend, you know, of, third weekend of August. August. On the third weekend of August. I had so much trouble with that. Okay. You'll see, but I had so much trouble with that date. <laughs> okay, so. Oh my God, the Epidine. Person, the person <laughs> <wearing a baby. laughs> You're about to start on my own. <laughs> <laughs> If not, it's a look. Here we go. Um, oh, also, the impression I'm about to do is going to be terrible. So <laughs> here we go. <clears throat> Wasting time. Okay. <laughs> Hello, I am the star of the TV show Red Herrings, where I play famous detective Rod Fisher. And I'm going to take you through how the very first case happened, came to be where it came from. <laughs> it was called the Fishy Fatality. Nah, nah. I'm going to take you to a small fishing town, and on Ooh. the third weekend of every August, they had a fishing competition. It's, it's turning into Lady Wee Willy. There was a particular <laughs> day. It's very, very foggy, but <laughs> <I'm laughs> on their boats anyway. <laughs> The mist is all important. Start this fishing competition, which probably violated some sort of health and safety. <laughs> 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 what is it with you and health and safety? It didn't specify it was a lake. I presume it was a lake. <laughs> oh, sorry. So they found <laughs> the body of a man named Juan. We didn't know Juan's. <laughs> 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 It's like Ian McGandalf <laughs> reading the news. We didn't know what his name. His guts were all over his boat and his stomach was missing. It wasn't there. We presume it went overboard, but we don't know. It's not there. We just this don't know. Because it was a very foggy day. <laughs> all of the boats went out. Can we drink every time someone says foggy day? day. Really yeah. <laughs> Nuts to have known that that was Juan's boat, and yet somehow they found him and he was dead. <laughs> <laughs> we have a few suspects. Very dramatic for <laughs> telling this. Quickly, it's so good. Don't forget, the first was Juan's ex wife. Oh, look at the speed all of a sudden. Of the day. And we didn't say anything at all about Catch of the Day. <laughs> so. I presume she wasn't very suspicious, which <laughs> 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 consequences, Joe. Catch, who was Juan's rival, and the night before the competition, they had <laughs> rubbing some your legs slowly. <laughs> that does remind me of Ian McGandalf. He's yep. quite a <laughs> leg <laughs> rubber. <laughs> Underwater. I was just in character. We were instructor, yeah. and it seemed that Hugh was going to propose that night to Bree until. What was his name? <laughs> <laughs> Burst in. I found it one really difficult to remember the name. Hugh and said, You are never going to win this competition. He also slapped you about the face with a halibut and then reached onto his table, picked up the swordfish that was there, and took a huge bite out of it. Ooh, and then he it. left. <laughs> <laughs> However, <laughs> it seemed that it was not entirely ruined because of <coughs> the 
the competition, Bree was seen welcoming Hugh back to dry land with a very large, very shiny engagement ring upon her finger. Very large, very shiny. And I believe that was all the information that we had <coughs> through it this time to try and stop it leaving, but I don't know. <laughs> that was the 10 o'clock news. Oh. That was so good. That was good. Oh. I, I mean, given the five minute plus long nonsense that Joe gave you, that was very concisely told. The details were there. Yeah. You know. I don't think you dropped a single detail. If anything, you clarified a lot of what Joe said. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It, it streamlined it, definitely. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, the system works. I mean, I mean, I dropped everything that my brain clearly felt wasn't relevant, like the name of the factory and both puns at the end. Oh no, we lost a cod case. All oh, the double puns. Uh, I did lose a cod case, which is I'm, barely I'm a for anybody, so it's better off dead. <laughs> I'm afraid he's not going to be slapped in the face with halibut anymore. I don't oh, think. Oh no! No, that got lost. I really enjoyed that. Image. I think. I think. I can't remember, but I think. Yeah, I got lost. But, <laughs> but I'm, only saying, I'm only saying that now, Seb, having watched yeah. like two or three of them. Um, so are we, are we still happy with our theory, Alice? And do we think that what you told is still solvable I with that information? I think so. I think hope so, because so, I think I've done quite well with my theory, but we'll see. Excellent. Well, good. I like the confidence this time, as opposed mm. to last episode's just... I love, I love how everyone's got theories. I haven't a clue. <laughs> oh, I have, I have, I have a theory, but it's wrong. So, yeah. Um, Let's find out. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll find out perhaps why Polly doesn't have a theory. But first, um, let's see Sorry. Seb's uh, attempt at retelling. Oh God! Oh so wow! Much. <laughs> <laughs> How glam! <clears throat> okay. He's rubbing his legs again. Kieran McGandalf here. Is that uh, a close? Famous actor who, who of course, <laughs> very famously played. Why are you uh, bouncing uh, so much the fishing again? detective Rod Fisher um, in, in yesteryear days of television. Um, <laughs> and I, I wanted to tell you about the, uh, the first case that oh I ever God. came across. Uh, as, uh, which it looks like you're doing name. something under the camera, <laughs> 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 which is very inappropriate, but even so. What are you doing? Uh, yes, it was. I'm, it was I'm just sort of bouncing on the, the sofa, you know, uh, fidgeting. The fishy clue. <laughs> the of the fishy clue. Uh, what happened? Fishy um, clue. Uh, there was uh, this fishing club, and uh, every every third third weekend in August. No, the third weekend. So year, good. No. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Third week of the August. Of August. And, and, and oh, all of the uh, many boats went out into the uh, lake or possible sea, body of water of some sort. <laughs> <laughs> and at this particular uh, uh, time when they went out, it was very, very foggy. dangerously foggy, one might have said. Um, <laughs> right. No regard for health and safety, these um, fishing competitors. <laughs> um, anywho, um, what happened is the uh, fishermen and, uh, and the fishing boats all went out, uh, and then mysteriously uh, one of them came across uh, a boat uh, which had one of the competitors in it, known as Juan, uh, who had a funny name, so I shall call him Juan of the biggest fish I've ever seen. <laughs> Um, and he was found yep. in his boat, and he had been eviscerated. Huh? His stomach had been pulled out, and there were there was blood and gore oh, everywhere. And this was very mysterious and suspicious because he had been be. alive when he went out. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, the suspicion fell on three very shady characters. There was, and I'm going to quickly go through the names so I don't forget them. Uh, there was Cat of the day. Oh, it's about to catch. Yeah. Huge catch. And there was three big underwater. Yes, uh, because they, they had history. They did. They they knew each other intimately. Because <laughs> they were a swingers club. Some time before, anyway. Um, 
uh, breathing <laughs> underwater, and Hugh <laughs> were going to be married. Oh. That was it. They were going to be married. And Hugh and Juan had a, 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 a rivalry that, that, oh. that uh, would, would <clears throat> come apart, and they, they hated each other. Um, and, and because of this, when the previous night, uh, <laughs> Bry had, had um, oh. met. So Bree's turned to Bry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Hugh, huge catch, uh, had met huge catch at a restaurant, and uh, Hugh was going to ask Bry to marry him, <laughs> but before he could, before he could, Juan. <laughs> Entered the restaurant. And, and That's because I'm Bry. I just love it. By insulting, insulting both of them somehow. I'm not sure how. Uh, and then also taking a bite, a bite out of the swordfish that um, you and Bry free uh, were having. <laughs> um, and then hey, I ship it. Um, this was. Unexpected, uh, <laughs> but um, everything seemed to be fine. And when Hugh returned to shore on the day of the competition, victorious because he was a fish, uh, Bree had, had how long uh, is this? Had, had an engagement ring to welcome him back with. I think it's near the end. Shot the day appeared to be pointless. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. No, I'm sorry. The, the swordfish had something to do with his evisceration. <laughs> <laughs> Let me have the theory at the end there. I felt, I felt bad for reducing Kat to nothing more than the ex-wife, but <laughs> even that is now pointless. Yeah. It's just got, it's just got, I didn't think I could get lower than that. Oh my god. Yeah, this, this is now just Kat, but it wasn't her. <laughs> you know, I, 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 think, I think that you did really well there, Seb, because... Yeah, it, it back, I'm horrified. It, 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 seemed, it seemed like you were like first or second in line. Like, really? Thought, yeah, yeah. I thought, oh, <laughs> concise. And now, now, I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> That's the reason why I didn't know what I was doing. You watched that and thought, my, what, what conciseness and brevity. Concise <laughs> storytelling. So, uh, we obviously have a theory because we heard a little bit of it there. Um, do we think, still think your theory holds up? And do you still think it was solvable after what you delivered? Uh, I mean, no. No, not in the slightest. I'm sure I have not got relevant <laughs> information um, in there. Unless, unless it's the third week of August every year. And that is relevant. It, it could well be. Um, so that uh, was delivered to um, Polly. <laughs> One of the most famous actors in the world. In fact, I nice want to tell you a tale that I once knew when I was playing Rod Fisher, the great fisherman detective. Yes, uh, it is the tale of the fish. Fishy water syndrome. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what happened was there was this great fishing contest. Fishy water syndrome. Fishy water syndrome. Uh, they, uh, just before this fishing contest, it was very muggy. Very <laughs> muggy. And there were four people uh, going out into the fishing contest. Yachting. Oh, tiny contest then. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The elite group. There was a uh, breathing underwater, a uh, oh. huge catch, uh, um, uh, oh. <laughs> It's tricky, isn't it? <laughs> yeah! Uh, mm. Died, I forgot his name already. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, not Sven. Chap that died, and he. This happened on stage, and I'll also get my mind. This is happening on stage, and that's it. In character, one of their friends was called Juan. Juan. Breathing underwater. Huge catch, <laughs> uh, catch of the day, and no one's dead one yet. big fish. That is the chap. 
and he was mysteriously killed. Yes, um, he was found in the water uh, in his boat, dead. Um, now, what happened that preceded this? Uh, in the water in his boat? Uh, uh, b sorry, before this was a dinner party. Uh, a, a dinner. They went out for dinner. And this was um, Brie and Hugh Fish. You'd catch you'd be could be wrong here. When <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, it's now changed to you and cat. Dripping down, yeah, dripping out of the water. <laughs> uh, yes, he um he basically um, uh, was eating this uh, delicious uh, swordfish and he took a big bite out of that. Uh, and uh, thought nothing of it. In fact, uh, the next day before the race, um, Bree uh, and uh, one big fish turned yeah, up. We're going completely off, off yeah. piece now. Uh, I'm not sure who it was that had an engagement ring, but there was an engagement ring. <laughs> <laughs> there was uh, a bit of a kerfuffle between huge catch. It feels a bit like watching a Tory minister try to do a briefing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When a woman, I'm not sure. Again, always forgetting lines. Uh, catch <laughs> and day, facts. Um, yes, let's say that she was she was a, a, a lady <laughs> <laughs> breathing underwater. This like some of the other fishermen. She was known as being a lady. On <laughs> looking at the mercury that uh, uh, one big fish had eaten uh, from what? the um, from the swordfish, I think. Possibly that could have been the reason for it. There, uh, he picked up on my random theory at the end and has gone with it. <laughs> yeah, through it. You yeah. probably didn't hear the mercury uh, bit, but it was a fishing contest uh, that I uh, I remember from oh my, my God. days as Rod Fisher, uh, Sorry, uh, coming up. The, the great fisherman detective. <laughs> just trying. I'm trying. I didn't know who was next, so I was making trying to make sure I was on the day, concise. Um, and uh, three, uh, four boats. <laughs> Went out. That would be one big fish who passed away. So, um, breathing underwater or drying. Oh, only oh, me and you with the summer. Huge, uh, the fish uh, catch of the day, oh and they were out. And it was only uh, breathing underwater catch of the day and huge big fish that came back in, uh, and then they found huge the, big fish, the, the dead corpse. <laughs> Of uh, of um one big fish, you uh, <laughs> big fish, one big fish. The brothers now. And there was an engagement. I'm not sure. <laughs> still going. And her or her and someone else. Um, and then there was definitely a rivalry between <laughs> you. Yes, I remember that now. I am. I'm Phil. Phil Boat. You and I. Phil. Uh, just just traveling, traveling through the uh, he nonsense that he spoke to. Yes. Um, anyway, going forward, <laughs> the, the man terribly, terribly passed away. And then after that, there was... Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, God. From that, we, we deciphered who, who killed him. I'm <laughs> so glad you were last. <laughs> you. Oh, my God. I wouldn't know what to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's Ian McGandall signing off. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! How long is the sum up? Again, the, like the sum up was as long as the, slightly longer almost. Oh, than the, um, he just repeated it. Oh, fabulous, boy! Virtual high five. Um, when I got Paulie's back and watched it, I was so upset that I didn't have anyone else to send it to. <laughs> <laughs> the idea of someone watching that then trying to retell the story. I love it. <laughs> oh, um, you're so gonna, you're going to put me first next week. I can just tell, <laughs> and then we're all screwed. Um, solvable? Do we think? No. No. Yeah. Mm. Uh, well. If 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 I go with what Seb was saying, and uh, oh really? <laughs> okay, go on. Yeah, <laughs> with the whole mercury thing. Maybe. I don't know. Um, well, in which case, uh, we've now heard um, from everyone the string of unreliable narrators. Um, <clears throat> if people thought it was still solvable up until Seb, um, and then Seb felt that it had crumbled, and Polly agreed. Um, so <laughs> over to you at home you can figure out who killed Juan that got away leave a comment let us know 
Um, and then there'll be a video later this week that will reveal who done it and we'll hear everyone's theories. Um, uh, but in the meantime, like and subscribe, like, subscribe, Indeed. follow, yeah. whatever, all that stuff. Stalk. And uh, we'll see you soon for the theory and the solution to, uh, well, again, the title changed by the end of it. <laughs> the, 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 fishy, yeah. the fishy case of the water. Syndrome. The fishy water syndrome. Fishy water Join water us again syndrome. for the solution to the fishy water syndrome. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.